Hi, this is Keith Schneider, CEO of MarketGage.com, and this is January 6th edition of Market Outlook. So we certainly had a dramatic close to the year of 2012 and even a more dramatic beginning to 2013. Uh, so before I start, I just want to remind everyone to please uh, participate in that investment sentiment survey, and we'll be happy to share the results, and they certainly have been interesting. So dramatic shifts in the market certainly the normal linkages have changed uh, that is definitely uh, interesting sign for the market these are dramatic shifts let's take a look and review them for one let's take a look at the Dow the Dow you can see um, we sort of tested the 200 day moving average as that fiscal cliff loomed and now we had a closing high in the Dow uh, that is the highest close since November. Uh, so that's fairly significant. One thing is that we are not uh, either overbought nor oversold on our RSI, so there's plenty of mo room to move either way. Uh, another interesting point is you can also see the same or a similar picture. Uh, we have this upward re uh, rising channel on the weekly chart. Uh, around the 137 to 138 level there is some resistance up here but nonetheless our 65 week and 200 week moving averages are both pointing up sloping up and trading above it that's a positive sign the weekly trends still intact and again we're working towards the upper end of this uh, pennant formation It'll be interesting to see what type of resistance we run into at the highs. But again, neither overbought nor oversold. Um, in the Dow, there is no short-term negative patterns uh, from a trading short-term trading perspective. Let's take a look at some of the market indicators. VIX, you can see the VXX. We got overbought, uh, which meant that sentiment was getting pretty uh, negative. We move back into the Bollinger Bands. Um, once we move back into this upper uh, end of the Bollinger Band and through the 50-day moving average, sentiment is definitely tipping to the bullish side. Again, same thing on the longer-term weekly. We basically had been trading inside the Bollinger Bands. Sentiment has definitely indicated um, less, a lot less nervousness uh, in the markets but we're not at that frothy level. We're at the bottom of these bands. Let's keep track. Um, if we continue to get a, a, a significant upside, we could see this uh, VIX get into deeply oversold territory, which would um, give us a warning about a potential reversal of this strong up move. Let's take a look at some of the market internals as well. Uh, market internals well I will come back to that let's let's go back to TLT very very interesting the TLTs you can see these are interest rates we basically attempted to take out earlier um, in in the week uh, take out um, the 50-day moving average we failed and we had this dramatic reversal. And as you can see, we now have closed several days under the 200-day um, uh, moving, moving average, confirming a phase change. However, we do have what we consider a, a short-term or a slingshot potential reversal. So until we actually confirm a move above the 120 level, uh, basically the longer-term trend on the daily chart has been violated to the downside and strongly so so this is one of our weakest closes uh, since September um, more importantly on the weekly charts the key 65 week moving average has been penetrated for the first time since 2011 that is definitely a major shift and you can see that we've sort of taken out and we're building this sort of uh, topping formation here 
So let's see if this short-term pattern plays out. We get another test, but I would imagine a, a rally would meet some pretty decent resistance up around that 123 level. Meantime, overall, the trend, the long-term trend in rates seems to be subsiding and a potential mega trend shift is underway. So let's keep an eye on that on a longer term basis. Uh, let's take a look at gold. Uh, another interesting shift. This is not, um, not inconsistent with the picture in bonds, right? As rates rise, it costs more to hold gold. Lots of speculative money while there's easy money falls into gold. But looking at the technicals, you can see Again, a sharply declining 50-day moving average. We moved above the 200, ran into immediate resistance, had a sell-off um, of uh, pretty significant uh, proportions. We were trading up around 165 right after the announcement of that fiscal cliff settlement, um, back down to the 158.50 um, or 158 level. That's a pretty good uh, $60 drop in gold in a matter of hours so you can see we're basically now holding uh, at the bottom end of the Bollinger Band you had some pretty good liquidation on the downside in volume what's interesting not oversold nor overbought so there's plenty of move room to move either way now also of interest is this down channel so you see here we should find on the downside support somewhere around the 156 to 157 level if we continue at this downward pan this downward uh, trend more importantly you can see on the monthly chart here that with the return move on the long-term trend line has remained intact and we're now trading beneath that I believe that's the 23 month um, now that's the 15 month moving average so our shorter term moving average on the monthly charts is uh, being attacked and we're trading right around it so with this uh, uh, test of the trend line and the failure so far it's possible that this long term trend in gold is under attack also supporting that is the fact that the 65 week moving average we've now closed under it for two successive weeks um, we're not overbought nor oversold although trading towards the lower end so until we can get above this 65 week moving average which comes in at 162.50 um, basically certainly on the weekly trend um, it has been it is broken down also you can see the last test that we bounced off should act as some resistance so it'll be interesting to see what happens. But these are some of the shifts that we see occurring. It looks like certainly the momentum is now shifting in the gold, um, in the bonds, um, and uh, you can see that unfold. Let's also take a look at the U.S. dollar against the Japanese yen. We pointed this out last week. We thought the market was a bit um, frothy. You can see we're quite overbought uh, in the dollar against the yen um, on a weekly basis. We're certainly around there on the daily basis. Uh, but you can see the very, very long-term trend in the Japanese yen against the dollar um, is definitely now shifted. And it also interesting to note that back in 1995, we hit around 80 cents or excuse me, 80 yen to the dollar we hit that same level and have bounced off it pretty sharply we're now trading 88 but remember this particular um, uh, currency um, years ago I remember when it was trading around 300 so uh, there's plenty of room to move this is a seismic shift um, let's also take a look at UUP which is a blend of many currencies against the dollar and you can see uh, not much here on the monthly but let's take a look you can see that we entered a recovery phase on the daily chart we had a key reversal pattern here 
uh, that we have pointed out in our services. We're getting a little bit frothy in here. We took some money off the table um, uh, late this week as the market hit some oversold levels. But interestingly enough, we have a potential bottom in here. Um, and as rates rise, that's also not surprising. That's going to lift um, lift the dollar as well. So some interesting shifts. Uh, let's watch this 2225 level. That's the 200-day moving average and this critical swing point. So we have uh, that 2225 level as critical resistance. And again, of course, the key low that was put in here um, that we bounced off very nicely from the 2160 level is a key level to hold. Um, if you want to play it a little bit shorter term, you want to make sure that we still hold above our 50-day moving average, which is around 2190 or so. Okay, so you can see potential shifts in the market from the bonds to gold. Uh, certainly the stock market looks pretty pretty decent, although you definitely hit some oversold, or excuse me, some overbought readings in some of the indicators. Um, let's take a look at one other thing here. Um, now, I thought I had another set of charts here. Um, I want to take a look at that McClellan oscillator. Oh, here we go, McClellan oscillator. All right, so on the market internals, um, you can see that on a shorter-term basis, the 10-day advance decline, getting a little rich, uh, but again, plenty more room to the upside. Um, on the up-down volume, lagging, so certainly not in a situation where both volume and advanced declines are in overbought range. However, on the McClellan oscillator, clearly in rich territory here. However, as you know, uh, markets can get more overextended, um, and there's certainly plenty more uh, to get further overextended here. But we want to watch for a hook down. So the market is definitely in an overbought situation on a more intermediate term basis. Uh, however, um, with the other, other uh, indicators um, that we've uh, looked at, you can see that the price momentum is not um, on an overbought or oversold level. Um, interestingly enough, uh, no slingshot or key reversal patterns um, that are discernible as the spies basically closed pretty much on their highs uh, for the week. Okay, well, that's it for now. Let's uh, watch these uh, potential Teutonic shifts and a paradigm shift, and see you next week.